Bassam and bad governance protesters took to the streets in parts of Nigeria on Monday, despite Sunday's speech by President Bola Tinubu to give dialogue a chance. Meanwhile, the Nigerian military has condemned those who it says have been flying the Russian flag during the protest and calling on the military to take over. The Nigerian Daily Post reports that Chief of Defense Staff General Christopher Mustafa said Monday that those flying the Russian flag have committed a treasonable offense. Debo Olukunagba is the National Police uh, Public Publicity Secretary of Nigeria's main opposition People's Democratic Party, the PDP. He tells me that while the PDP condemns the flying of the Russian flag, President Tinubu's Sunday speech has uh, intensive uh, to the demands of the protesters. We believe that the protest is part of uh, the element of uh, democracy and that uh, in a democracy people have a right to peacefully protest and that the government has an obligation and a duty to listen to those that are protesting for one reason or the other. And as a party, we have emphasized the need for whatever agitation or protest that may be by the citizens that it must be conducted in a very peaceful manner. President Tinubu addressed the nation on Sunday and called for dialogue. Your party says that the president's speech was diversionary and that it failed to address the issues. What do you think the president should have said or could have said? I'll give you an example. There were specific demands made by the protesters. The policies of the government, like we have emphasized, was ill-timed. Ill advice, especially the abrupt, without due consultation of petroleum product prices, and the abrupt removal of the subsidy was such that to have a dislocation and they have a cascading negative effect on the, the Nigerian economy. And that has dislocated lives in Nigeria. And that has resulted in inflation, the rising cost of food items and medicines and all of that. I think that is the abrupt removal or whatever you call the floating of the Naira. Let me ask you, there are reports that um, some of the protesters have been flying the Russian flag and some have also called for uh, the military to step in. What do you make of that? I mean, for all those courts are irresponsible. We don't support that. This is a great country that has the potential to be very great in the, com- in the community of nations worldwide. I would believe that we can resolve all the issues. Democracy is the best form of government. We have adopted that. And this country, PDP, I will not emphasize this. PDP established the culture of the peaceful transfer of power. You recall in 2015, after 16 years in government, the PDP ensured a peaceful transfer of power. That is the essence of democracy. So any call for those is uncalled for, is irresponsible. That is not what we believe in. We believe that there must be conversation. We believe that there must be dialogue. We believe that when there are issues, as we have right now, is available, the president should listen to those demands and must begin to set up machinery to allow for engagement. So that those, the essence of the protest will not be lost to people who do not mean well for the country. Debo Olugunamba is the National Publicity Secretary of Nigeria's main opposition People's Democratic Party, the PDP. He was speaking with us from Abuja. Nearly 100 police officers from the Democratic Republic of Congo fled to neighboring Uganda over the weekend as fighting between M23 rebels and the military in Congo's east intensified, a Ugandan military spokesperson said on Monday. The officers arrived via the Ishasha border crossing in Ikanungu district in southwestern Uganda, said Major Kitroncho Tabaro, a regional spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. The 98 officers arrived with 43 guns and ammunition and were subsequently disarmed. They were freeing fighting by M23 and other militias and the Congo military. There is a lot of violence there and then there is also hunger, Tabalo said. Over the past four days, at least 2,500 more Congolese refugees have arrived in Uganda, freeing the raging violence across the border, he said. The main push factor is the intensifying violence and insecurity. 
Tabalo said adding that pregnant women, breastfeeding mothers and young children were among the refugees. The M23 has been waging a fresh insurgency in Congo's militia Prague East since 2022. A United Nations report seen by Rogers last month said the Ugandan army has provided support to the Tutsi-led rebel group, a charge Uganda denies. The UN has also accused Uganda's neighbor Rwanda of backing the M23, which has repeatedly seized large parts of mineral-rich eastern Congo, allegations Rwanda denied. Efforts by Congo's military to push back the rebels have intensified over the past year with the use of drones and aircraft, although the rebels have still expanded territory under their control. In June, the M23 seized the town of Kanyawayonga, whose location on high ground makes it a converted gateway to other parts of eastern Congo's North Kivu province. Fighting in North Kivu has driven more than 1.7 million people from their homes, taking the total number of Congolese displaced by multiple conflicts to a record 7.2 million, according to UN estimates.